Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board, Board of Health and Sewer Commissioners meeting for October 25th, 2022. The time is 6, uh, 6.02 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting um, on Zoom and, and here at the main meeting room at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. Please note that while an option for remote attendance or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems um, interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on the agenda should make plans for an in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. Uh, for purpose of in-person attendance, the town will host a meeting here at the main meeting room, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, so there uh, on the town website, you'll town of Deerfield website, you'll see a, a link to this meeting uh, around the calendar. There's um, there's a Zoom link you can click on there to join by Zoom. If you'd like to dial in, um, it's being broadcast on FCAT as well. So dial in number is 833-548-0276. That's a toll free number. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580 and the passcode is 570012. Um, people on landlines or um, on Zoom, just mute yourself until you're speaking and then just state your name and where you live. So uh, call the meeting to order. Um, we're gonna move around the agenda a little bit tonight, um, but first we'll have public comment just to check if there's anybody that would like to say anything on, on any of the agenda items tonight. Uh, Lily and Anna Lee would like to say something. Welcome, Lily, you got your hand up. I do. Um, I just wanted to um, make sure that you all have been given the um, <clears throat> site survey contract draft and everything um, because we are trying to get this work done before it gets cold. So I just wanted to make sure you all have everything so that when it's time to talk about it. Excellent. Um, and um, I would very much appreciate if I could move to the top of the list, if possible, I have a seven o'clock meeting, but I understand you have to do what you do. We do, we got a couple of things first, but we'll get you in pretty quick. Um, Thanks. Yep, I'll get you up as soon as we can. Um, anything else, Ann Lee? Just a thank you to all of you uh, in the front lines and behind the scenes. I mean, last night's uh, town meeting was incredible. The turnout was unbelievable. And I think it all really moved incredibly well, considering all the sort of <laughs> unexpected things. So thank you all. Very, yeah. very, very well run meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the public for turning out. It's important <laughs> to see democracy in action and how the town gets run decisions made so very good um no other comments tonight um we do have a couple of hearings but i know casey wanted us to move up the um and and vote our special election for the uh library project for the library yes yep. so Thank you. i've got several motions they may sound funny when i read them but here we go well you could say i move <laughs> all right <laughs> that's I'll what that. carolyn and i said when you walked out of the room before we opened the meeting <laughs> This is language I received from council. Yep. Uh, so let's see, let's get these squared away. So I move that prior public notice of the select board's intention to call a special town meeting for the purpose of a special election for approval of debt exclusions under proposition two and a half be waived because in the opinion of the select board, the public interest would suffer from such delay. Do I have a second? Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Oh, yes, Great. Um, I move that the special town meeting be called for December 6, 2022, for the purpose of a special election to vote on a question relative to debt exclusions under Prop 2 and a half. Second. <laughs> Second. And all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Yeah, Thank you. And that I move that the warrant be open for insertion of questions. Second. And any further discussion? All those in favor? 
Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank you, Trevor McDaniel, aye. I move that the uh, motion of the select board by two thirds vote to seek voter approval at a special election to exclude from the uh, provisions of general laws, chapter 59, section 21 C, the funds required for the payment of principal and interest on bonds, <coughs> note or other, uh, or certificates of indebtedness. <coughs> Please. Um, there was statements made that the ballot vote is um, registered. Carolyn? Carolyn, we can't hear you. Sorry. Is that one working? Is it off? Yeah, it's, it's off. off. Let's switch right now. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Yeah, there we go. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, there was a, a <clears throat> statements, I believe, made uh, yesterday. I mean, last night that the it was a ma just a majority vote, so this is saying that it is a two thirds vote. Yeah, that's that was a, I, I've been going back and forth on that question quite a bit. I looked at uh, town when we did the sewer project; that was a two thirds vote, I believe. But I I don't recall if the election was two thirds, if that was just a majority. And then and then the the project manager Dan Pallada last night said that. It was two thirds at the town meeting, but a, a simple majority at the ballot. So I don't know if we have any. So I don't have an answer um, and we don't have a lot of time. I can try while you guys are talking. If you want to put it on hold, I can try to get a, a hold of Lisa. No, I, I think we should vote this, but I would well, like clarification to verify that this is correct. Well, let's let's just hold while she's hunting oh, on okay. this on this yeah. one section and go on on the others. And my okay. recollection, too, was that um, I was on a library meeting today, too, where uh, another town that's just going through this process, it was two thirds, 50.1 or whatever, just 50 plus for the, for the, for ballot. the, for the ballot vote. Gotcha. And um, it was definitely stated last night at the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I specifically asked this question of Lisa Mead about a week ago and I didn't get an answer. Right. I asked, is it two thirds for the first vote and two thirds for the second vote or 50 for the second vote and she just said two thirds and didn't answer the second question. Hmm. Okay. Well, She's busy, so I'm not criticizing. Yeah. I'm just stating that I did ask this question a week ago. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, let's move on to the motion of the select board. Um, so so we, we should table that. Then, yeah, table this one okay. section here to get an answer on that. Um, okay. So then um, I move that the select board seek voter motion uh, that the select board seek voter approval at a special election to be held on December 6, 2022 to exempt from provisions of general laws, chapter 59, section 21C, the funds required for payment of principal and interest on bonds, notes, and certificates of indebtedness as set forth in the following question one. I'll read question one. Shall the town of Deerfield be allowed to exempt from provisions of proposition two and a half, so-called, the amounts required to pay for the bond issued in order to pay the costs of construction, renovation, and expansion of the De Tilton Library, including demolition, landscaping, paving, utility, and other site improvements, incidental or directly related to such construction, renovation, or and expansion, necessary architectural, engineering, or other professional and legal expenses and fees associated with this project, temporary library operational space, storage and moving expenses, furnishing and equipment, uh, and for all other costs incidental or related thereto. Yes or no? Um, so do I have a second on that? Yes, second. Carolyn, any, I'm any, sorry. Any further discussion? <clears throat> of course, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 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 What's the language from here down? We put mm. this one on hold. Right. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Trevor. Yep, so yep. I pulled up Chapter 44, Section 7. Yep. And it says city and cities and towns may incur debt by a two thirds vote. Right. It doesn't specify. I think the prop two and a half language. I know the IGRs are separate from this chapter. This is the enabling chapter for you to incur debt, right. um, but it doesn't reference. I just did a search in the document. It doesn't reference a different um, maj quantum majority mm -hmm. later in this section. So. 
that's I think that's where we get the two thirds question or the yep. two thirds answer. I still would like you to check with council. Okay. So you're good with this question here? Uh, Just the, so. this part here. Yeah. Um, that doesn't say anything, that doesn't about, say anything about percentages percentage. of vote. Correct. Correct. Um, so any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And I, then I, I'm not going to close the warrant. No, we can't close we it until we get the answer. answer. So we can move on and we'll finish that up at the end of the meeting. Okay. Um, I'm going to get this out of the way really quick, or if I forget, Sue will be after me. <laughs> so Deerfield Recreational Basketball. So this is starting up. Registration is available for grades one through nine, Tuesday, November 1st, uh, 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. at the Town Hall in South Deerfield for grades one and two and seven and nine only, Tuesday, December 6th from 5 to 6 p.m. at the Recreational Office at the Town Hall. Um, so th there's a, you, you'll see a post on, on town website and the rec department for the costs of these, um, after November 1st, there will be a $10 late registration fee. So, um, no registrations for <clears throat> grades three through six will be taken after the skills assessment on November 7th. So the deadline for grades one and two and co-ed grades seven and not seven through nine is December 6th. Um, so skills assessment for co-ed teams, grade three and four will be Monday, November 7th at 5.45 p.m. at the Deerfield um, Elementary School. And then grades five and six will also be Monday, November 7th, but at 6.45 at the Deerfield Elementary School. So non-resident non students may register on, spa on space available basis. Uh, the fee for registration fee is $25 in accordance to that policy. Um, Let's see. So family policy, you pay for two children. The third one is free. Um, so so sign up. Uh, basketball is here again and really fun, uh, great to watch and um, great to play. So please do that. If you have any questions, reach out to Sue in the recreational department. So um, <clears throat> we're going to hold on that. Uh, why don't we... Um, why don't we go to Lily? Lily, so she can head out to her meeting, and then we'll pull in John. Yeah. Great. Okay. So this is uh, we're moving on to the discussion <coughs> item of senior housing, a site survey, and resource area delineation contract for review and approval. Um. So this is from Berkshire Design Group, right? Lily, do you want to speak on this at all? Or sure. Um. Yes. This is Berkshire Design Group, and um. We have a number of tasks in our site feasibility, and many of them intersect with the needs of the um, municipal campus and other efforts in that area. Um, and senior housing is delighted to take this on because we have the CPC funds and will not you know, add any additional monetary burden to the town. The, um, the reason for the haste on this is simply that we would love to get the field work done before winter, and then it takes them weeks to do the analysis and everything. Um, in our conversations, we discussed that um, we want this to be a really um, intensive, fully transparent, uh, no agenda other than getting it absolutely right <laughs> process. Um, and we anticipate that um, as well as this, we will end up um, having the peer review later on that we will um, presumably incur. But this 18,000 plus, we, we were originally quoted 20,000 for the whole kit and kaboodle, which is why we went for 30,000 to the CPC last year, because it, we thought we were going to get the market, the site, uh, mark feasibility, site feasibility, and the survey. Well, I guess not. Um, so the idea is let us get this site analysis completed. We will resubmit a new application to the CPC. Um, we are talking um, about including the geothermal assessment, which we may not have to. So we have to we have to get some stuff figured out based on what other grant funding comes in. But as you may recall, we set aside, we've got about 
well over $400,000 for senior housing set aside in the CPC. And we will not be needing that much. So um, as much as of the burden that we can relieve from the taxpayers is, is our goal. So that's what's going on here. That's hence the haste. Um, and also we, we've limited it to this one task because we wanna get started. It's not clear if the neighborhood grant that we got would pick up some of this deliverables too, so. Right, the other deliverables, yes. We believe the complete neighborhoods grant will take care of some of the other things. Okay. Uh, so, um, and, and um, I owe Casey a massive apology because I sent it this morning. Um, presumably, what I guess what we would be looking for is your approval to do this pending review of council. Does that work, Casey? Okay, Casey's nodding. Yes. <laughs> yes, because there are sometimes a couple contract clauses that we have to work with engineers on. Um, and you sent it this morning. I actually hadn't had a chance to send it to Ben. Okay. So, because um, we were. My hope is that we work with Berkshire Design on a number of projects. Yeah. So hopefully they won't, yeah. they will just use the same words and stuff. But yes. Well, I think it is important that we start getting a good, you know, survey of our, our campus area, right? Depending on what we're going to do in the future, regardless of what happens, it's really important that we start to do that. One thing I was just noticing that the architectural design fees are to be determined, geotechnical borings to be determined, and arborist assessment, geothermal assessment. So that stuff, we really don't have a subtotal on this, but we would be approving specifically the only things that have numbers on them at this only time. task number two oh, the contract oh, is solely for task number two exactly because um we are hoping the complete neighborhoods might take yep. um, a couple of the tasks and and and, and the other grants that um right. the gotcha. other grants okay that that helps out like so the then so we get this done before the ground freezes and all that exactly okay are you uh, I, I just uh, just checking, I, even though we're not dealing with it tonight, but um, task five um, on page five of six says conceptual test fits, and that's because you're going to see how buildings fit on the site. Um, we're that. not we're not there yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just yep. making sure it's not pits, it's fits. It's fits, yeah. and um, and actually also. Uh, we heard from Rachel Loeffler, with, with whom we've been working at Berkshire Design, that um, that you, Tim, had already reached out to the architect that they reached out to. Um, to I, presumably, I think awesome it's the Sanderson design. Place one. So, um, it, you know, and that's why it'll be good to get together at CCI and talk about what, what makes sense, but it all depends on, on grants, et cetera, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so to, just to clarify Lily's request is task two is to be approved only. okay and we have money already approved from town meeting for this so correct I make a motion to approve task two the site survey and delineations of wetlands and streams for eighteen thousand seven hundred dollars and i'll second that any further discussion i would think i would th i think you want to say pending oh, and subject to review and you need to lawyer. assign who's yeah. going to sign the contract Right. Yep. Thank you. I'll second that second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Lou. Thank you. You guys rock. You did a great job last night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You. Bye -bye. you too, Casey. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I just ran around. <laughs> oh, you ran. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Bye. So uh, let's see, do, do you want to talk about telecommuting or is that going to no. Okay, that's not tonight. Why don't you um, talk to Mr. Huh? I'm going to blow his name up. I'm not going to pronounce it right. Hello, Let me call Lisa. She just sent me a text. Okay, good. We'll talk to, hey, John, uh, is it Tortolet or Tortolet? Tortolot? I don't know. Tortolot, yes, Tortolot. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, I just unmuted myself. Now I'm trying to turn on the camera. Take your time. No, no rush at all. Okay, here we go. Great. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Yeah. So tell us a bit about yourself and what, what you're working on. Well, the reason I'm here tonight is that one of my colleagues at Rivermore Energy, whose name is David Pomerantz, um, was formerly the director of central services for the city of Northampton. And um, in some regional, um, I believe, environmental organizations had had the opportunity to um, to know Carolyn a little bit. And we wanted to follow up, David and I, I'm really sitting in for David tonight because he had another town meeting at the same time. Um, we wanted to offer ourselves and our company as a resource if the town of Deerfield is interested in discussing EV charging and EV charging infrastructure in the community. Mm -hmm. We are um, very active in clean energy and um, solar battery storage and EV charging and energy resiliency for the past um, approximately 12 or 13 years. Um, we're, we worked with all the major utilities in the state and many of the municipal utilities in the state, as well as a number of cities and towns, including the city of Boston, um, Holyoke, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking Western, Western Mass right now, but um, Aguam, um, Devons, and others, uh, including Cape Cod. And um, we've been very active over the past couple of years because our, our clients have, our municipal clients particularly have asked us about EV charging and we are currently installing citywide EV charging in the city of Northampton, excuse me, in the city of Westfield. Um, in his previous work, when, when he was, before he retired for the city of Northampton, David did manage um, EV charging implementations in the city of Northampton as well. So we're working in Westfield, we're working with Westfield Barnes Airport, we're working with um, the Chatham Airport Commission on Cape Cod. And what we're tracking right now, and what I wanted to, to offer tonight to talk about and be a resource for is we're tracking current state funding for level two charging and current state grants for level two charging in the community and also upcoming federal funding through the federal infrastructure bill for um, EV fast charging, 20 to 30 minute fast charging um, for locations within a mile of designated interstate highway, you know, Route 91 being one of those mm -hmm. and also Route 2. Um, so federal funding there and some an additional upcoming federal funding uh, for what the feds are calling um, community infill locations. So that, that's a, a, a quick background. Um, and I'd be happy to talk to you about what we're doing in other communities and the resources we offer from grant applications all the way through planning, engineering, construction, and commissioning of, of EV charging. Yep. Um, we don't really know, to, or at least I don't know too much about it. So, <coughs> excuse me. What is level two charging? I don't. Michael, yeah, good, good, good question. So level two charging is is um, charging that's relatively fast. It will charge a, a full charge for a electric vehicle or an electric truck like a Ford F-150 electric SUV in one to six hours. So for a full charge, you're talking about multiple hours. And level two charging is what you would typically see at um, a school, mm -hmm. a business, you know, a um, governmental location like a Department of Public Works or a town hall, um, a public parking lot, um, you know, as I mentioned, a workplace or a campus, you know, for charging, if somebody's going to be there for, you know, an hour or more, mm -hmm. really, or even 30 minutes or more, you know, you, that's what you would see for level two charging. The other benefit of level two charging is that existing plug-in electric hybrids can accept level two charging, such as like a Chevy Volt or a Volvo um, SUV would be another example. And um, these plug-in hybrid, you know, so they have a gasoline engine as well as the plug-in electric and the battery. These types of vehicles, which are pretty common out in the road today and still being manufactured um, pretty prominently, 
those cars cannot accept a level three charge. So that's another good reason to have a level two. So I would say it's the use of a level two would be kind of a little bit longer than, you know, just running in and out, you know, in 20 or 30 minutes. And, um, and then the thinking about the vehicles that are already out there in the, in, in the community, in the state that, um, would be able to charge with level two, but not with level three. So those are a couple of the situations so where you'd use it. I guess my concern on that too, is it feels like that technology will be out of date fairly shortly. And it's, it's level three that really is the future, right? I mean, if we're gonna get off fossil fuels, when people are coming up 91, they're gonna pop off, go to Yankee Candle. You know, I talked to one vendor that was, you know, hoping to purchase some land in town and do a, do it, you know, a large place where you get off, get a coffee, you have a dog park, you have, you know, I don't know, 10 charging stations or whatever, and it's fast, phase three, they're charged, and then they're, they're on their way to Vermont up to the ski mountain or whatever it might be. And so um, it is, Deerfield is a very good location for that crossroads of, of I mean, it's just down from, from, from route two coming across, but it is, um, you know, 91, we get a ton of people coming north uh, ski holidays all, all winter long and coming south and um, you know there's a lot to do in town treehouse and yankee and all the other good restaurants berkshire. people can you know berkshire brew they can stop off and and um and charge pretty quickly and get on the road but i you know i do it's we're caught in this 22 catch 22 of do we invest in technology that's going to be gone in 10 years and um or or do we invest like jump to the future at phase three it's really a hard hard thing to think about yeah that's that's really well said i i think you're right i think you have a te technology adopt adopt excuse me technology adoption curve and um, you want to be very aware of that mm. what well, a strategy that we are using in other communities and putting with the airports is that um we are doing a combination of level two and level threes Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll do a couple level two stations and a couple level three stations. And then if somebody is going to be, you know, um, shopping or going out to a restaurant or, you know, going to um, another spot downtown, like a coffee shop or what have you, they, and they're going to be there for a little bit longer then that's a good use for level two, because they're not going to want to rush back in 20 minutes and move their car. Right. And then if you know you're going to be there longer, you're working, you're in a meeting, whatever, it's a, it's a really good use. And then you have, then you serve this install base that's still being manufactured of cars that are appropriate for level two that I mentioned earlier, the plug-in hybrid electrics. Mm -hmm. And then with the level threes, you're serving the need that you, that you outline well, which is modern, very fast vehicles, and people are going to be there for a shorter period of time. I can tell you that downtown merchants um, really do like having the level three and level two charging because they see it as a real amenity that they can offer their customers. So we're seeing a lot of restaurants, um, bookstores, coffee shops who are really interested in um, in both of these types of charging because they somebody's able to come in or even banks, people are able to come in and and you know use the um, the commercial businesses and patrons of the commercial businesses and also get a charge at the same time, and that that really is resonating in the business community. So I think it can be a both an environmental and an economic development opportunity in in the right locations, right in the downtown. And we are helping our customers. You know, for example, David, who's local and lives in Leiden, would be able to come down and walk around and take a look at potential sites and think about feasibility and. And um, and certainly the, the the usefulness and the location, businesses or or um, governmental facilities that would be nearby are important there. Um, and as, as it relates to ninety one, I think if you had a governmental facility where you own the land that was within a mile, that's the requirement of Route ninety one, and you had room to the federal requirement is to have two level three chargers or with two ports each or two plugs each so four ports you had you know if you had equivalent of four spaces plus an extra space for um, ada accessibility so a total of five spaces in a governmental facility that or a parking lot that's within within a mile of 91 i think that could be a really good 
very compelling um, opportunity for Deerfield because you'd be able to apply for a federal grant and they're coming out as early as Q4, the stated application date is Q this quarter. Um, you'd be able to apply for 80% funding from the federal government with a 20% being made up by the town or you're allowed to also go to the state for additional funding. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that, you know, given the interest there that we should, you know, we'd recommend in Deerfield. But I, I think you're more interested in having it be at an amenity where you're really overall helping the community and maybe the economic development rather than just serving people who want to get on and off 91. That'd be my yeah. so thought process. A couple of questions. Um, just to clarify, you, when you use the term customer, are you looking at Deerfield as a customer or are you looking at the people who plug in? Certainly. Um, yeah. The, um, we we're, we we serve um, municipal customers, so I may have used the word customer to mean our um, our municipal customers or our commercial customers. But you're right; they're also our customers or users of the level three um, infrastructure for sure. And, and uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm, because you're talking about Myriad, right? Yeah, but there we have two potential places that would would be something that you 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 would be, you know probably interested in we're we're developing uh, a public parking facility behind the main store uh storefronts of of deerfield and also there's a a park and ride um facility that's also in the same vicinity that might be an appropriate place for long term where it might be level two might be more appropriate but uh, right. a secondary question um do you provide the electricity and do you then profit from the purchases? Um, how does that work? Does the town have a share in it? Uh, in other words? Yeah, thank you for that question. That's helpful. So our, our typical um, work with, with cities and towns currently is to help the town with a grant for the, the project and the town would then own the EV charging assets itself on governmental property. So I'd like the question because it's helpful to illustrate for everybody the business model under the grants and the Fed, like for example, the federal grant program and the state grant programs is that the town would actually own the EV charging assets itself on governmental property. You would charge people uh, like the going rate for electricity you would receive payments from the users and we would work with you to obtain as many grants as possible to fund a high percentage of the capital costs of the, um, of the project. So the provider of the EV charging services would be the town of Deerfield rather than a third party commercial company that, um, you know, that comes in and, uh, you know, has a, owns the EV charging assets. And this, model that we're working with communities on, typically the communities are, are owning the EV charging, providing that as a an, as an amenity to the, to the community and charging a, a um, market rate for electricity. And one final question that's related to that. Um, is, is there a, a monthly fee that the community would have to pay to the electric companies, even if there was low usage? So is there a threshold level of electrical use that has to occur before this makes any financial sense? Uh, no, you would not have a, a like a minimum fee. Um, it would be based on the actual usage of the uh, of the EV charging asset itself. Oh, thank you. Well, no problem. Uh, back on that a little bit. Um, you know, I've been I was I had talked with people who had done this in Greenfield and you know, what, what our, what our in, impression was, it really had to do with the line of electricity, the pole you were pulling it off of and what kind of, um, what kind of flow of electricity was going through there and you were paying a certain rate, you know, depending on if it was a high, if there was high demand on it or low demand, you were gonna pay that demand no matter what. Um, so it really had a, it really was important on how, you know, what line you were pulling it off of and what that kind of use was. I mean, things may have changed a bit. This was a couple of years ago, and this I know it's a fast-moving industry, but um, so. Yes, so the, 
currently, this is a good news story. Currently, the utilities are funding the infrastructure from the street into, let's say it's a like a parking lot or a downtown parking lot situation. The utilities are funding the infrastructure from the street underground, unless there's some reason not to do it underground, they're funding it underground and then coming up to a small concrete pad on which the um, EV charging pedestals are sited. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting, right? The utilities are funding that infrastructure. They're able to rate base that. So all electric customers in, in the state are paying to subsidize that essentially in the rate base. And then the utility has a tariff now specifically for EV charging that, um, that charges basically a rate to the meter servant that's that um, monitors or meters the EV charging um, happening at that location. There is a deep, there is a Department of Public Utilities proceeding happening currently as we speak right. to improve the tariff for EV charging because um, there was a feeling that it was too high. Right. So there's a there's a formal um, case open at the DPU right now related to the um, basically the energy usage charges and then the monthly demand charge, which is based on how much you know your demand for EV charging maximum demand. So I'm pretty optimistic on that DPU case right now, and I think it's a pretty clean, straightforward situation because in cases where municipal or government or governmental entity owns the asset, then you know exactly what the utility is going to be charging you and you can charge a corresponding amount to your users. Let's say it's 30 cents a kilowatt hour. It's kind of the going rate right now that you can make that very clear to everyone so they can make, the consumers can make an informed choice. It's, it just pops up on their phone. This station is 30 cents a kilowatt hour and people can either choose to charge there or not. And the town knows also that that way that you're not gonna lose money Right. You can break you can break even, or if you want to make a little bit, you can. But essentially, you yeah you, know, you you can manage it carefully from a financial perspective. Yeah. And, I I I guess I'm I would be very interested in having some kind of proposal related to our new Leary lot project. Um. So how would you propose moving forward on this? And and your you know your rates obviously you don't work for charity so <laughs> what is yeah. your structure is there a percentage or is it a, a flat uh, base you know flat base what, what we this what what we do is um, we provide a complete solution so we do all we do we work hand in hand with our municipal customers or partners and we'll help with identifying sites with identifying the right grant applications with actually filling out the grant applications with you with identifying any and there usually is an additional amount that's not funded by the grant um, what that amount is so we'll we'll go through a couple different grant options with you we'll also have um, one of our team members come out and actually walk the um, drive and walk the locations like including the, the Leary lot and others that you're interested in to talk about feasibility, to talk about, you know, there is an ADA accessibility requirement. So, you, you know, it has to be appropriate for that, et cetera. So we'll do all that without a charge. And the idea is that if you, if it's a feasible project and it does receive the grant funding, then we will work with you to do the full implementation of the project. So, so we're basically a proceeding at risk you know, we, we obviously choose our customers carefully, but we're proceeding at risk to help you through the process. And if you're successful and move forward, then we would work with you on the implementation. We'll give you a proposal to tell you exactly what that um, construction process and the procurement of the equipment and everything will cost. And we, you know, there may be options and we'll work through that with you collaboratively, but, um, you know, we don't have an upfront cost to um, to do kind of this legwork on the planning. Okay. And if you decided not to proceed, that's okay. You know, you decide it's at the right time for us or our properties aren't appropriate or we want to wait, that is no problem. So specifically in, in Deerfield, David Pomerantz, my colleague would would do this himself. He form, you know, he's, he has a municipal background. He'd come down and, okay. and just in a very consultative way, do that with you. Um, I think 
I would be interested in seeing something at the Leary lot, a proposal for the Leary lot, our campus. Yeah. You know, um, we, we're trying to, we don't have a lot of information on our campus yet because it's contingent on a lot of grants that are coming and, and there's different renditions of what we might do, but we have, we need a common landscaping plan and a common parking plan that will minimize and break up the parking for the different buildings and that will um, count for, you know, multiple uses at different times. So um, that's sort of in the future, but it's here in the area. And then there's, like I said, the Leary lot. And can you think of anything offhand? What else? I, mean, that, thing? I, I think, you know, I don't want to get too, you know what I mean? Tone it in. I think the Leary lot's a great place to start and have, a, have an evaluation on what's going on because we know that's a set parameter, right? We, we, we voted last night to do the land swap. So we do know, and we have the money in the bank to develop the Leary lot right now. So we are definitely moving forward on that. And so that's a definite, right? I feel like that. Yeah, yeah. once we have yeah. the final numbers and stuff. Yeah. yeah. That, that could be quite good because we are we are um, working on some public parking lots, including some that are in the landscape um, and architectural design process right now. Um, you know, with keeping stormwater on site, buffer zones, all that good stuff. And the infrastructure really does, does need to be planned in advance. Mm -hmm. And there is a lead time on all these grants. I mean, even the state grant we're talking about at least several months. So. I think planning ahead is really great because we can then work with, if it's feasible, we can work with you and work, work with your utility, who I believe is Eversource in Deerfield yeah. and, and really bring in the infrastructure exactly where you want it. And we can, with your designer, we can lay out the parking spaces for the EV charging and the accessibility and that there's a, you know, there are ramps are required just like in traditional ADA accessible spots. So you kind of put the ADA accessible EV charging right next to the conventional ADA and just kind of site everything properly, bring the infrastructure in, and then it becomes part of your master plan. So you're not adding it after the fact, you know, because so that's that that would be a great, a great time to do it. Casey, go ahead. So I'd like to remind everybody that we already have an EV charging station that we put in at the Leary lot. Yep. So there's gonna need to be some discussion about this because that was through the state yep. uh, green communities grant from two years ago. Right. Um, and if we're going to redesign the lot, we need, yeah, you know, John would need to be aware of that. Of course. But we also, there's a lot of work that we have to do in the background. So yeah. having a proposal would be really helpful, John. I think um, okay. because we got to fit all this into some of the other thoughts that people have had around that spot. Right. Right. Into the whole strategy and master plan for the, for the property as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, John, if you if you can get in touch, send an email or with your contact and stuff to Casey, she can tie it in with our engineer that's working on the place. And maybe we can collaborate on that and figure out how we go. Forward. Yeah, we'd be happy to. We, I think the first step, first things first, we'd have David come out, walk with you, talk to you about it. If it's something you want to do, then we would we could begin the planning process and work with Casey on the existing station and get everything you know, to, you know, planned in properly from a master planning perspective. Um, I would say on the, from a lead time perspective that you do want to submit um, the, the utility and state grant application relatively quickly because the funding is available. And I, I think it's uniquely generous in Massachusetts right now. The grants for public access charging in Massachusetts are up to $50,000 per project. And as a data point, we're working with some of our construction partners on some projects in California. And a, 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 a typical incentive in California right now is $3,500 to $7,500 per project. Right. Yeah. So you can see where kind of if you drew a curve where the incentives are going. So I think it's a good time to um, to do this and get the infrastructure in. I also, I also am very bullish on um, kind of the idea of having some level two and level three. And I like the master planning. Mm -hmm thinking ahead on that quite a bit so yep sounds good yeah that's um that's good i i think it's definitely worth having a conversation um i'm a tesla owner so 
I probably would never use any of these EV charging stations because I have one at my house. Yeah. Um, also, Tesla has a thing where electricity is cheaper at certain times of day. So right. for instance, if you charge in the morning where there's low load, mm -hmm. I paid as low as five cents a kilowatt hour, uh, you know, or kilowatt, I mean. And, um, you know, conversely, when it's hot and everybody's using their air conditioning, the price goes up. But you're talking about something that's a fixed charge. Is that correct? Yes, and I would say, and when the DPU, um, when the DPU case is completed, um, it may be, it may very well be the case that there's some off-peak, there's a peak and off-peak element, you know, that is not dissimilar from what you experience with um, your Tesla plant. So I think that'll be interesting to see. I, I would expect that there'll be something in there around that, like, for, for, you know, at a minimum evenings, you know, and overnight. Okay. Well, thanks. Thank you, John. Appreciate you. Know, Thank you for the time. And I, I will, um, I'll follow up as you asked with, um, okay. By emailing Casey and then I'll email the, um, select board and you know, David and I, and asked to arrange a convenient time to, to take a walk around. So John, you should email me so we don't create what we call serial communications. Yeah, just, <laughs> they sure. should these when they're not in a meeting. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And yeah. you don't mean by that, you don't mean breakfast. Okay. We no, right. no not count chocula. Yeah. <laughs> we will uh I will email you, Casey. I got it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks thank for your time, you. John. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me in. Appreciate it, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Good night. Um so we get do we get an answer, Casey, on uh our two thirds, one and a half or so yes. Yeah, so you had to have two thirds at town meeting because it was a borrowing question. But Correct. physically, the select board has to have at least two thirds majority for all three of you to actually put it on a ballot, which for oh, a three member yeah. board means a unanimous vote. Yeah, that's what it's asking to the two thirds. Yes, that's, that's what it's asking. Related to the select board, but that, that doesn't mean that it's a two thirds vote when people walk in. That's a simple majority vote. That's a simple majority at, at the election. But that's because you've got different things going on, it's confusing. Yeah. So we, we got through the borrowing question with two thirds last night. You guys need to have essentially a unanimous vote to put this on, the, on a special election warrant. And then at the polls, we will need a simple majority. Yeah, actually, okay. I think two thirds is actually two out of three votes. That's right. But I think we're all unanimous that we want she to put it on She said it has poll. to be unanimous, so I would go. I think you are too. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's, that's why I, I, I meant that. Okay. Former editor with my brain was going, this just means that two, two out of the three of us have to vote that's for this, right. but okay. three of us probably will vote for it. Well, so thank just you for, for clarity, clarifying. I'll, I'll read that motion again and we'll, because we had tabled it. Um, motion of the select board by two thirds vote shall seek voter approval at the special um, election to exclude from the provisions of general laws chapter 59 comma section 21 C comma the funds required for the payment of principal and interest on bonds comma note or certificates uh, certifications of indebtedness. I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Chair McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Mouse, aye. Now we can close it. Yes, and then uh, I'll make a motion that the warrant of the special election to be held on December 6, 2022 is closed and notice of uh, hereof be transmitted to the town clerk. All in favor? Oh, Tim. no. Oh, I'd yeah. Second. Oh, a second. Second. Second, Carolyn. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Kevin McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. And that, um, and again, that will be from 10 in the morning till 8 p.m. or yes, 10 in the morning till 8 p.m. Yes. So, and there is a, I assume there's a, something to sign here too, or not. Okay, so we'll get one to sign for you. Right, or you'll have something for us to sign. There's one in our thing, but you. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Can we use one of these that it's in the packet? Some holes there in isn't it? one in, in the signature file. I thought I left I one. I don't see one in here at the moment. Okay. That's what I was looking for, but unless I'll it's... print it while you guys are talking. Okay, that that works. Um, unless it's oh, there's, there's yeah, there's a couple things. Uh, hang on one sec, Casey. There's a couple things here. Nope, these are all bargaining agreements. So. <clears throat>
we do have to sign these as well. Um, what are those two other green tabs? Uh, these are all, no, this not, is one. Not that one, I mean. And the, then the, these are the other, these are the other, um, there's two, uh, okay. two, two, two agreements. Two packages. Yeah, two yeah. packages okay. here. Um, okay, so uh, uh, do, do, do we have a, a Megan Washburn to the Recreation Committee? Do we want to do that now or is that coming up later? You can do it whatever order you want to do it. Um, is it in here? It's, in it's just a, I think it's a memo from the Rec Committee. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, except for the resignation. Okay. In search of a new member of the committee. Oh, unanimously recommends making Washburn. Okay, great. So um, I entertain a motion to approve Megan Washburn to the recreational department. I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. So that's done. Um, and I think the only other thing on here is sewer rate proposal stuff. So essentially what I wanted to do have you guys do because you haven't discussed this in a meeting oh, can we is look at look at that rate proposal because we have to put a notice out by it's supposed to go in the paper on Thursday. Okay. Um, it has to have 30 days before you can hold a hearing. Yep. You know, we have to provide some idea to the sewer users what they could pay. Okay. So that that usually DPC does that calculation. Um, Tim had asked for additional information about um, how calculations were done before that. So Chris mm -hmm. found that and put that in the packet. Yep. Um, and I do think it was probably, I think we got that from the treasure collector, right? Correct. Yeah. Robert? Barb used to do these. And then when we got into debt and the projects, um, Dave, Dave's team had been helping with us, you know, figuring out how much we need for debt service. Right what we're tackling. So, that's so what you see in the charts that we receive from DPC is an estimate based on those, those assumptions. Right. Um, there's diff there's different rates the board could choose. Yep. But we do need to publish with the notice of the hearing. We need to publish some example of what they could expect to see. So okay. I would like to be able to publish what DPC sent us because there's more than one option in there. There is. And really it's talking about kind of what our normal, operational needs and that was around 2.9 percent increase um and then there's additional expenses that we're taking on which is um increased sludge disposal cost which is about thirty four thousand dollars of an increase um and that's pretty much two trucks <laughs> two trips to lowell um and then additional um we had some discussion whether we wanted to take on some money for planning um that's a discussion to have whether we, we want to do that or not, or, or find another source for that. And the same with the last one at 15,000. Um, the, the vehicle we need to support because that was voted again um, last night. So the idea is to support that. So, uh, so I have some process questions sure. and, and just I, since this is my first time on this, this yep. responsibility, um, I had hoped, you know, to be able to have the previous previous year's information so I could read it, digest it. I got it this afternoon. Right. Think about it, understand it, raise sure. any questions before we had. Um, but so uh, I'm just asking, I'm yep. not suggesting this is a good idea. Uh, if, if we did this at our regular meeting on the no November 2nd, how would that impact the timing of newspaper notification? And we would be into December, Tim. Yeah. So yeah. The, so we'd be a week later. And it's yeah. and really you've the, already we've already pushed it back twice. And the yeah. real, the the real issue is that we normally send out bills very soon, so right. we're already late sending yeah. out yeah, bills. I People understand. usually kind of expect their bill at a certain time. So ge generally, usually Barb is all over us. Like, how come you haven't mm -hmm. <laughs> the hearing yet? Yeah. So, um, but. Uh, you know, and generally this doesn't have to be, you know, we can change all of this. Yeah. I mean, there's no set reason we have to, yeah. I mean, really the main thing is, is this I mean, and the truck. But what we're trying we have to, to do incorporate is, yeah. the borrowing and what the expectation is when we renew the loan that we have, the band that we have, mm -hmm. Trevor, that's another thing that they build into that is right. they know what USDA is going to require. 
And so they build that into the rate. This is one of the reasons that the technical assistance from the engineers is so key. Yeah, so yeah, um, so the, we have to have a note, 30 days of notification so that we can alert the public to come out to the hearing. Yes. And at the night that we hold this public hearing, mm -hmm. um, we would be able to make adjustments if there's a good argument for one direction or another direction. Absolutely. And then uh, conceivably set a rate. Yes, we set a rate. And definitely. then that would allow them to prepare bills to yep. go out. Right. And it's all based on water usage. Yep. Right. Okay. Yep. Uh, in in that case, I'm. Yeah, you know, we have. I, I'll have the time to digest the information. Yeah, you're gonna have th um, a yeah, little sure. over thirty days 30 to look days. at it. Yes, yes. If, if I can't read can that in thirty totally. days, I'm. Yeah. Okay. No, but you're right. There, this is kind of like, hey, this is what you could do, and take take the month to kind of figure out yeah. what we should do, yeah. and then and hear from the public and say, right. you know, what's going on, and say these are the most important things. This is what's coming up. And uh, these are our debt services. These are our choices, especially right. the last one, right. um, because it kind of also relates to next year's when we start closing yeah. the loan and we will either close the loan late in 23 or 24. So that really has an effect on right. do we put some money aside in the uh, retained earnings so it's not such a whack in the next year and we try and smooth out those increases. But um, until we get to that level, we close the loan and we've got our level level right you know, you know what you're paying you know exactly. you know what your debt load is yep. for year to year absolutely um, yep yep yeah so yeah all we'll right well time. that we'll that's time. that clarifies and simplifies Great. my thinking process on this so yep. thank you good. you're welcome okay so um do you need us to um to just to vote this hearing or or, or well i set the different. hearing up for the 30th because yeah. that was the closest i could get if you want to vote it you're welcome to do it but i did it <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I functionally I did the background work so you could do that. Right. So um so, so I, you're, just, you're looking yeah, at vote the hearing. It's all good. M moving that we have the moving that we have the sewer rate hearing on uh, November 30th, 2022 at 6 p.m. to set the FY23 sewer rate. Right? Yeah. Have a, a second. second. Great. Second. All okay. those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nassai. Great. So then we'll take the month to figure out what we do. So I request that the November 30th select board agenda be adjusted in accordance with the expected interest that this topic is going to have. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, we typically have, have light and load light, on the very light. Oh, I think we're, you're, he's right. We're going to get a lot of questions. Yeah, we do. We always do. So, um, okay. So, do you want me to sort of streamline that agenda and not put yeah. a lot of things on that, Tim? Tell Carolyn no. <laughs> yeah, and Carolyn, you heard him say that. <laughs> that means the items no unanticipated. Soil. We Sorry. need to no mosquito district. <laughs> but we do uh, we do need to talk about healthy soils, right? Yeah, yes. this letter. This, is this letter. Yep. Okay. So can I just take a second and read it real quick? Sure. And Absolutely. This is um, to to we're going to be getting an award, correct? You want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, well, we're being uh, uh, proposed to. Uh, to to receive an award, national yeah. award, right? Um, so this is our declaration that we are interested. I guess. We've done an awful lot of work. We have. I actually, I um, if you when you get done reading it, if you don't have any suggestions, maybe you could read it out loud. Oh, I'd love to read. It. Can I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, so this is um, uh, October twenty fifth, twenty twenty two. Our climate change resiliency plan, Deerfield twenty thirty, is the result of more than three decades of work preparing Deerfield for the multiple climate challenges to come, and the Healthy Soils Plan is a central is central to that goal. Geographically, Deerfield is at the bottom of the bowl at the confluence of the Deerfield, Green, and Connecticut rivers. The flooding risk is great here, but extreme heat and drought also threaten our most vulnerable citizens. Food production on our world-class soils is also threatened by these challenges. 
Deerfield's residents understand the important, importance of creating healthy soils that can absorb and store lots of water during intense rain events and release it during increasingly co uh, common periods of drought caused by climate change. Our voters at town meetings have long supported land conservation, stormwater regulations, innovative bylaws focus on, on a green site plan review process and plans that support climate resiliency. Our 20, uh, 2014 Complete Streets and Livability Plan fostered the uh, 2017 Tree Belt Survey, which resulted in our policy to plant more climate resilient trees as an example of the town's commitment. Tropical Storm Irene washed thousands of tons of soil out to Long Island Sound. That event helped foster a close relationship among 20 communities along the Deerfield River, federal, state, federal and state agencies, and the local working group Creating Resilient Communities. These stakeholders are working across state borders for more than 11 years to promote soil management best practices by towns, farmers, and other landowners. Our 2018 report, Ecological Resilience in Deerfield, Trees as Living Infrastructure, and the 2022 Healthy Soils Report continue to influence local policy decisions. The Franklin D uh, Conservation District voted at its October 2022 meeting to support Deerfield's Yard by Yard program. Funding, this, uh, funding for this program will pay for professional consulting and outreach services, plant stock and installation for homeowners and training for DPW employees on promoting lawn to meadow uh, a conversion and creating pollinator habitat. The COVID pandemic st stalled momentum generated by the town supported climate change forum of February 29, 2020, but Deerfield hosted another successful climate forum in its April in April this year. Deerfield remains committed to climate resiliency and plans to continue implementing healthy soils recommendations. Respectfully submitted, Trevor McDaniel, Chair, Chair of the Select Board, Carolyn Shores Ness, Tim Pilchi, Select Board. I love it. Like, Anything you'd want to add, anybody? Um, it well, seems like it captures pretty well what we've been doing and all the work you've been doing. Um, well, the um, state contractor for the Healthy Soils Action Plan on the state level, Regenerative Design up here in Greenfield, who was also our consultant on this project, uh, MVP supported project here in town, um, is the one that's nominating us. And so I thought that was pretty wonderful and I'm sure this will lead to more grant opportunities. Yep. <laughs> Great. So thank you. Thank you. I put in hyphens between lawn two and meadow. <laughs> I forgot to out. do that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, more readable that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So uh, thank you for that. Thank you for your work on that. Well, well so it was t uh, Tim edited down my um, letter by at least to the, half. La to the last minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's, I have to say it's very wonderful that we, um, you know, we have such a good working group here because people truly are getting stuff done. Yeah, it's excellent. Um, Casey, do, do you, uh, we voted these collective bargaining agreements already. You just need signatures on them or do you need, okay, just signatures. Great. Okay. We will sign these. Down. You voted them last week and the corrected language came in um yesterday okay looks like there's two each okay. two signatures in this packet um or just just one signature there and then one signature here I think okay these are identical Got and it. then there's two here We really have nothing else on the agenda. We can, we're done, right? I want to um, thank everybody for coming out last night. It's a lively meeting, a lot of good discussion.
And, um, um, and I, down forward on a lot of good things. Yeah. I, I actually had just a, a couple announcements. I, Can I just, or, before okay, you start your announcements, I'd also like to thank the town's folks for being so civil to each other, because mm -hmm. uh, I know there were some strong opinions on both sides of many issues. And um, I think that was the most cordial meeting I've ever attended in Deerfield at a, at a town meeting. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I was going to say that it was it was really reminded me of um, older town meetings that we've had in the past, you know, uh, a few yeah. years ago. Yep, that was good. Um, it was good, good but work. I, I, I did want to point out, I mean, there was a lot of stuff going on, so I didn't want to get into a big discussion, but um, we as a select board, when we get um, an email addressed to all three of us, we really cannot respond. So um, I just wanted Charlene to um, Galinsky to know that um, we, we really didn't have a choice in not re, not responding. And I, I, I'll have Casey explain why on that. So when, when you do get an email, um, the, you have to be very careful as a select board to not discuss something outside of an open meeting. And so Trevor had forwarded me that email from Charlene and I asked Lisa and Lisa said she would have an answer for us by Monday. Unfortunately, because of all the background work in the finance committee meeting um, related, so we had a lot of background work to get the town meeting guide done. And then finance committee met Friday night. Right. And I had to incorporate all of that. So I spent most of the weekend getting the guide done. Um, so that town meeting and making sure we were prepared for town meeting insofar as we could be. We did not know we were gonna have 357 people. Um, so I didn't realize I was going to need that many guides. I've never seen a, a town meeting that busy in Deerfield before. Mm -hmm. So I applaud everyone for coming out. But functionally, um, I wasn't able to respond to her. And I know people want a response right away, but there are just some times that I can't do that. I, I, I did have a, um, a conversation today just kind of explaining that a bit and that how we how we can reply and that kind of stuff and just, you know, to reach out, you know, anybody, if you're going to email us all, just reach out. And, and that's what I tell people is send it to me because I usually forward it out. She'll send it out and then we don't have to get, you know, we, we get all the information. And then I know like that you've replied, or somebody else has replied because I sometimes right. don't know if anyone's replied and, and we don't want to. And so what I tell people is I usually send out information like that via blind carbon copy to prevent that kind of interaction, because all you can do, if you get it blind carbon copy, you can really only do a reply to me. Yeah, that helps. So we yeah. try to do that as a method to sort of protect the select board and us from creating a situation where you could have what they call a serial communication. Yep. Well, we'll I, get, get right I, I just wanted to clarify it and I didn't want to take up any more time at the yeah. meeting last night, but you know, there really isn't much we can do when we're set up in that situation. Do you um, have anything else? Anybody? Have well, I, I was from a board of health point of view. Yeah. I just want to say um, we had a oh, wonderful, yeah. wonderful clinic on right. Saturday and thankfully we had such wonderful volunteers. My a a fellow, bit. fellow it's board of health Trevor people. And and, um, you know, we had Sunderland, Tom Feinkevich, uh, Jackie Choate Great from turnout. Conway, and Mike Archibald from Waitley is our, you know, our team, and um, several other great volunteers. And we were able to do 742 vaccinations. Um, we had 295 regular flu, 130 high dose flu that we're giving out, 146 Moderna, and 171 Pfizer. Um, by by valence that were um, administered, and so I, I felt like you That's know proud. really proud. really awesome. so pleased. We you know it's again it's through a vendor, but um, Walgreens after being such a crank all week, uh, after finding out that they weren't able to sign up for what people were signing up, but then not telling us what they needed. You know there was no way to for people to tell what they wanted. So they flew in extra doses and they, you know, all the vaccinators showed up and Alex, thank, thank goodness, Alex was um, worked the entire clinic as a vaccinator because he's a pharmacist with Walgreens. Um, so it worked out 
really well. Yeah, so I, I, I just want to say thank the you. The feedback we got from the people coming in the line and then seeing them zip out not that long later. I mean, it was we had five lines set up. That's that was a perfect plan. I mean, it was a gorgeous day, which helps. But I mean, just the flow and the setup was good, and people were in and out. I can't. So many people thanked us on the way out. Like, couldn't believe how quick it was and easy. Came up to us later and just thanked us. You know, last That's night good. at the meeting and how smooth and easy that was. That's a great system. Let's keep that yeah, going. And I want to use the word throughput. We put throughput was 186 people an hour. Yeah. Or 186 shots an hour, I should say, because some of them got two. Right. <laughs> That's right. Yep. It was good. So it's very good. Very proud. I, I, I have to say, I think we did, you know, it just was really wonderful. Everything came together. Yeah. Yep. You know, unlike the September 30th, where, you know, we were promised well, 10 vaccinators and we only had it, four. It's you happened know, it's in just, other communities where you just don't have the people. And, but yeah. we had good people and yeah. great planning. So, so thank you for doing everything that. Everything worked out fine. It shows so, the uh, benefit of having a well oiled emergency dispensing site team. Yep. Um, and uh, we would encourage the next governor to consider us when yeah. uh, when these kinds of situations arrive, Absolutely. rather than relying totally on paid vendors. Yep. Because volunteers Made volunteer for a reason. Yep. And, I, and, and uh, you know, I, every day, uh, you know, I have people that are willing to volunteer. You know, reach out, and so we have quite a list of wonderful people, and I. We are going to have a training, an ICS incident command training um, in November here sometime. I don't have the exact dates yet, but John Pachork is putting it together. And um, so it, it's pretty exciting. We're going to get back into our um, regular emergency planning kind of thing. And I have something to say yeah. that I just remembered that I, I was really crabby at the meeting about a week or so ago about how long it was going to take to get our legislation through the state house oh, yeah and i, I have just i too. can't okay. thank joe comiford and natalie blay enough for stepping up and rushing that through um the system I, I recognize they were working all along on our behalf and it wasn't a criticism of their work at all i i think the world of the two of them and i can't think we're i know we're we're not we have never been represented as well uh, and and they're working amazingly for us um my frustration was just with the molasses of it takes so long to do that while our staff was falling down around us and it was no criticism of them uh just of a system in itself but um i understand it's all been passed and it's sitting on the governor's desk to be signed and we can get some relief for our staff and i can't thank natalie and joe enough for for their help and i just wanted to say that because it was really crabby a week ago when i was out of uh you know out of line i would say but um but no, thank you all very much you were frustrated and appreciate it um but joe uh was able to get the senate to act on it and natalie both oh on God. the same day and so you're waiting for until thursday because normally the senate enacts bills on thursday so yeah no that was very a spe grateful. speedy yep Huge. I also want to say Joe Comerford is our hero of the week because <laughs> for, the for the cake, our DO Mass Department of Transportation shut down our 350th cake over by the South Deerfield Fire District. And it was like, what? <laughs> well, as, as long as we don't have to eat it too, I'll say. Right, exactly. I know. Well, <laughs> I called Joe and I told her this was a small but meaningful request Very meaningful. and would she please follow up for us we, and, and we promise not to gather around it right I know. They said, don't do a lot which no, might gonna, be hard for deerfield we're going to gather around it on the south deerfield <laughs> fire district property right right we'll i promise that the dot property but, but not on dot property <laughs> so anyway we're going to have our party and i just think that we should Joe Cumberford Chanel, she is our hero of the yeah, week. Hero of the week for doing no this. Doubt, for so all we of this. now can have our mm -hmm. cake out on five and ten by the South Deerfield Fire District, and we can have our party as long yeah. as it's on South Deerfield <laughs> property. So well, I'm going to modify anyway. that slightly and say my heroes of the week are Casey Warren, Sarah Kimball, and all the staff Very that helped good. pull off a special town meeting. So Very good. thank yeah. you so much, and our newest. Yeah. Uh, our newest team member, so thank you. That's yes. right. Yes. Welcome. Chris through. jumped in right when we needed him, so thanks to Chris. Absolutely. Thank First you, day is a special town meeting. Oh <laughs> yes. yes. I didn't even think about that. I didn't yeah. even know. I didn't even this know. This is day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some great help. So, so he helped us do a lot of work, and we appreciate it, all of us. Very grateful for you. Yes. For sure. 
Um, I have, can I say two things, please? Please, yes. Um, you have the draft. So Tim had finished up the anti-hate statement yes. and we hadn't gone back and voted it. I gave you a draft and I've put it on the next agenda for the second for you guys okay. to formally review. So you have some time. Yep. Um, so that'll be a few days. Um, the other thing is, is we've got, so if I have to make some changes to the language, I left you a copy of your warrant, your special elections warrant to sign. If yeah. I have to change any of that, when I talk to Carlene tomorrow, yeah. um, I may, I may let you know that you may have to re-sign where it says moved to, and then if we have details of the vote. That's fine. If I have to put that in, I have to tell everyone I've never done a special elections warrant like this in Ashfield. It was we had the the way we did this. It was a little different because we did a full prop two and a half override, which doesn't require the same percentage quantum vote for to put an election warrant together. So I had a different way to do it. So I'm familiarizing myself with this. If I have to fix something, I will let you know. Okay, thank you. Um, and then I think Casey will also give you there's some um, questions and stuff from the from the dig group subcommittee that was looking to get our meeting together. They sent an email out and again they didn't line carbon copy you. you can read those. Yeah, okay. But we can I can I, and I haven't read the email yet it ha it came in right before yeah, the meeting. Early couple minutes before we but if there's something you need to know I will let you know respond to them and and blind carbon copy you so okay. that you can keep abreast of it motion okay. to adjourn uh, make the motion second any further discussion all those in favor Tim Hilchie aye Trevor McDaniel aye Carolyn Nassai have a good week everybody